Hi there, my name is Beth and Thomas. Um, Thank you for considering me for this opportunity. I would like to make a cake for the pharmacy department that I work at, which is in Bridgend in South Wales. Obviously the NHS have had a very busy few couple of months and that's us included. I just think it would be a really nice treat for everybody and just put a smile on everybody's faces and boost morale. And that is it. Thank you. I was just ringing up to let you know that you're in. Oh! Oh, oh my God! Yeah! Oh. Okay, okay, cool. Thank so, yeah. God. So, um, I think pressure's yeah, on. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I'm a bit shocked, but thank you. <laughs> right, so we're going to make our sponges. So we're going to do a 10 egg mixture, which is going to give us about three of our layers of rainbow cake. So it's a really simple recipe. We just need to cream our butter and sugar first. And we want it to just look really light and pale and creamy. Just use the paddle. Yeah, put it on slow to start with, just so all the sugar's combined and then we can whack it up to fast to really cream it. While the um, butter and sugar is creaming, I'm going to crack 10 eggs into, into a bowl. My mother bought um, all the ingredients, so she was like, oh, make sure you do a shout out to me because I'm doing my bit. And I was like, oh my god, alright. <laughs> oh, did she? Oh, well, I have to give her a shout out, definitely. What's her name? Pass, yeah. But maybe you have to give your mum a slice as well. Mine looks like this now, Bethan. Lovely. So now we just need to add our eggs in. So on slow, put the eggs in one at a time until they kind of combine in. Once all your eggs are in, Bethan, just stop the mixer. And we just need to weigh 500 grams of self-raising flour. And I always put like a teaspoon of baking powder into that flour as well. I treated myself to posh vanilla. Oh, you've got meal some nothing. <laughs> That's the best one. I love it. I've used it ever since I started baking. A couple of teaspoons is good for that amount of mixture. Just mix it on slow speed, and I do it about increments of three. You just want to see that the flour's disappeared into the mixture, but don't overbeat it. So we just want to keep it light. That's done. So I just um, use my spatula just to make sure, it go around and make sure it's all kind of incorporated because sometimes at the bottom of the bowl you get a bit that's not mixed. Now you want to make a rainbow cake. Have you decided if you want to do it in bright or pastel inside? So I was thinking more bright. We've got some really good food colourings from PME and they are very very strong. So the best thing to do is just put a little little by little until you're happy with the shade. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna make my yellow one first because then I can use the same bowl to make my orange and the same bowl to make my red. I like to think good. Yeah, exactly. Minimise the washing up. So what we're going to do, into the bowl I need you to weigh 650 grams of sponge batter. I'm only going to put, because I don't want mine to be very, very strong, I'm just going to put like the end of a knife in mine. All the colours vary in their intensity. Like I found that the green was mega, mega, mega dark. Just put a little bit in and then just gently mix it through until you've got your desired shade. So I'm just going to mix mine. But like I said, I want mine to be pastel, so I'm not going to put too much in mine. I'm going to, that's what mine looks like. It's just a light yellow. And I'm keeping my light. Two seconds, I need my husband to answer the phone. Don't worry, that's oh. okay. It's surprising how, how yellow it gets, actually. Really surprising, yeah. It's, they're really intense colours. So PME have been really kind the way they've like got on board with this and um, they've sent absolutely everything we need. So they've sent us some really fantastic teams as well, haven't they? Yeah, I was busy lining those last night. <laughs> <laughs> but my top tip to people, when you're lining tins, I trim off the end of a fresh roll of parchment so then it's easy and you've just got your strips for lining cake tins. Oh, so that company donated all this stuff, did they? To that PME donated it, oh my god. Yes, they're brilliant. And they've sent, I mean, they've, they've been amazing that they've sent the turntables and everything. And obviously KitchenAid being so kind as well and donating a KitchenAid mixer to everybody's. Having a KitchenAid is like that kind of holy grail, it's like best you can have. When you do your green, just be aware of the green because that is super bright. That's the thing with a rainbow cake, it's, um, it will be a little bit tougher than um, just a, a vanilla sponge, but they look so pretty, don't they? Yeah, it's a bit on hand. No. It'll, be, it'll still be delicious. That looks nice. I like that. And we don't need to wash the bowl because we can keep it for the orange, so we're winning. I just use a spoon and I'm going to smooth it out to the edges of the tin. So I just kind of do this. 
and just to make it level. What we need to do is we need to bake an orange and a red or pink. You can do red or pink. I'm gonna, I might do a pink in mine, but you can do red or pink. And then we need to make purple, green and blue. So, okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our sponge in the, we're gonna get all three of them ready and put them in the oven at the same time. And then you're gonna need to make another 10 egg mixture in your KitchenAid and do yeah, the other three yeah. colours. Any time you just ring me or FaceTime me because I'm just here all day. We're just doing this together. Bye. Right, so we're going to make our cookie topper. And um, so what we need to do is roll it out and cut around our shape. It's really easy. The most tricky bit is getting the lolly sticks into the cookie without um, like squashing it too much. And that's why we're going to roll it a bit thick. We've got our sugar and our butter. Now, yeah, and, vanilla. and vanilla as well. Yeah, I'll put mine in too. Just mix it on slow until the butter and sugar has gone together as to a paste. So it's definitely mixed, but it's not pale and fluffy. Then once it's mixed in, we'll add one egg and then we'll mix that in on slow. And then we'll just tip in all of the flour and mix yeah. it on, on slow until it comes together into a ball. That's it. So should we do that now? <coughs> So mine's ready, mine's come together, it's just um, like a paste now. So I'm going to put my egg in it now. So just mix it until it's incorporated. I'm going to put my flour in now. Yep. And once your flour's all mixed in, you can turn up the speed just a little bit, just to give it a small knead, but only for a few seconds. So I'll show you, Bethan. Mine's ready now, it's just come together like that. So it just kind of comes together in a few big chunks, which is your sort of mouldable dough. It's quite a stiff dough, because um, we like it to hold its shape. So what I'm going to say then, Beth, I'm going to roll out my cookie, and I'm just going to show you what to do. So just watch me do one, because then you can concentrate and see how to do it. So you can see my surface here, can't you? Yeah, yeah. So obviously the template that we have is not huge, it's only... Yeah, we'll probably be able to get four or five out of this amount of dough. So what I'm going to do is just break off about a third of my dough to start with. Okay. You can just kind of get it into a sausage shape like that. And put quite a lot of flour on the surface. We don't want it to stick because we want it to keep its shape. And I'm just going to sprinkle the dough with a little bit of flour, not too much. I just don't want my rolling pin to stick. These Marzi pan spaces that PME sent you. That's the normal depth that I do my cookies to. But we want to put a stick in ours. So for these ones, we are not going to roll them to this depth. We're going to turn them on their side so we have a thicker oh, cookie. Okay. All right? So put them down either side of the dough. And then I'm going to take my rolling pin and roll it a little bit. And I've got through my template over here. Now I can see that um, it's about the right width already, but it needs to be longer. So I'll just do a quarter turn, make sure I get flour underneath there every time I turn it. And now I'm going to roll it that way. I'm not pressing, I'm just kind of letting it go gradually. I can see that's big enough already. At this point, where it's not completely thin, transfer this thick piece onto one side of your tray. And I'm just going to roll it till my rolling pin has hit those guide sticks. I'm going to put my template on and I'm going to cut round it and I'm just going around the edges trying to keep in the detail and the edges will soften. You just go around it as neatly as you can. Okay. Just be careful not to move the template once you start it. And you can do this idea with numbers and letters, shapes, so it's a nice way to add a cake topper. So now I need to put the sticks in it. Take your stick, just steadying the cookie, just very gently. I don't want to push my fingers into it. But I'm looking and I'm going to push it horizontally through the middle of the cookie, just straight up towards the sort of tallest point. And try and keep it straight, because when we put it in the cake, if you imagine if it's going like that and you push it in, it's going to break. So you're putting it straight in. I'm going to watch you and then we're going to be leaving us to do our, finish our cookies off. Yeah, that looks great. Brilliant. That's good. So you can definitely, that's perfect. You can definitely fit one on the other side, can't you? We're just going to bake them now. Um, don't want it soft inside because it won't hold its shape. 
we want them to be really crispy cookies and then once you've got your second your next little cookie in the oven we're going to come back and we're going to trim down our sponges and we're going to crumb coat our sponges okay all right yeah. thanks a lot Beth then see you in a bit bye bye right okay so what we need to do we need to trim down all of our sponges first this is a pretty easy job because PME have sent us our cake levellers, yeah. which means that we're going to get a really lovely, perfectly level, straight cake. If you've got the tools, you're going to get um, a much better finish. What I always want to look for is the best base um, foundation I can get. So it's almost everything straight level, straight level, straight. When we do our decorating, it's going to be easier and look better. So I'll show you how to trim a sponge down. So I'm just going to make sure you can see my area so um i'm going to show you how to do the red one and then i'm going to watch you do your one so do you feel comfortable to trim them all up now and then we'll come back when they're trimmed? Yeah, now I've had a go one. Just give me a ring or a text when you're finished and we'll, then we'll um, okay. do the buttercream. Lovely. See you in a bit. Yeah. Bye. Fab. So your, your sponges look all good. Lovely mm -hmm. colour. Right, we're going to make buttercream. Have you made buttercream before? Uh, yeah. It's easy, isn't it? What I'm going to do is I put um, icing sugar in my bowl first. I put one... I put 500 gram packet in my bowl first. So what we do now is we've got our three packets of butter. So put the three packets of butter on top of that icing sugar. What we're going to do is we're just going to mix it slowly and then we're going to whip it up fast so we've got creamy, really buttery buttercream. Well, this is going to be enough to, to fill our cake and crumb coat it. I'm going to use a tea towel over the top of mine just because it does puff up everywhere and I'm going to do it on slow and then once I can see that all the icing sugar is mixed into the butter and it's not going to puff everywhere then we can put it on fast speed. Mine's mixed in now so I'm going to put some of my vanilla in now. I'm going to whack mine up on high speed just so it goes a bit creamier. Well, about a tablespoon of vanilla? Yeah. What you'll find is the more you whip it, the whiter and paler it will go. So now I've done that, I'm going to put my second packet of icing sugar in and then do it on slow and then do it on fast again. So mine's really, look how white and fluffy mine's getting now. We want it to be fairly soft that we can pallet it on nicely but not sloppy. So if you look at mine, if you look at this, it's a bit softer. Oh, hello, Taffy. <laughs> oh, bless him. How old is he? Uh, he's like six and a half, nearly. Oh, mine's done. When your buttercream's ready, let me know, and then I'll show you how to build the cake. So just watch me. You don't have to do yours yet. So onto this board, I'm going to get a little bit of yeah. buttercream, splodge it on there, right? Yeah. Not too much. Then I'm going to take my next one, put it on top, and what I do is I just kind of press it and rub it against each other. And that creates a bit of a vacuum to hold it still, you see, right? So now I need to put some buttercream onto here to stick my first sponge layer on. So I'm just going to take my spatula and put a generous blob on the top there. And then I'm just okay. going to repeat until I get to my orange sponge. So I would like to watch you do what I've just done. Okay. Because I I can see what you're doing. You put this in there. Um, so now you've got to put your blob of buttercream on there. That is good. Smart. So what we need to do now, Bethan, when you get to the orange layer, don't put any buttercream on it. Just stop what you're doing and I'll show you how we finish it. Okay. Good bye. luck. Bye. That looks fantastic. Brilliant. So we now need to put the red one on top. So I'm going to show you how I put it on top and then I'm going to show you how I 
crumb coat it. The neater we get it, the easier it is tomorrow. Fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do then, just watch me and then I'll watch you do yours. So now what we need to do is we need to push all of this icing into the side. And what we're doing by this is creating a nice flat finish. So we're always now thinking about that being straight. So I'm just going to go around like this. So this bit is the messiest, boring bit in my view, the crumb coating. I just want to get to the fun decorating bit, but it is really worth spending time on this bit because you're going to get a better result. Now I'm going to put it on the top. I just want a thin coat. So all you need to think about, again, is thinking about the angle. It's being quite firm with it. And also once you start to go round it, you want to try and do it all in one, one movement. And um, having a turntable means we can do that. So the way that you use this scraper, some people do it from the front, I do it from the back. So you want to hold the, scrape, the side scraper like this. I'm going to have my scraper firmly on that bass drum and pressing against the edge. I'm going to scrape it round. I'm happy with that and we'll leave it in the fridge overnight and then we'll decorate it tomorrow. So I'm going to just cover it for you and I'm going to show you how to do it. Put a bit of icing sugar on the board, that tiny bit, a cup of water, dampen the board, knead it till it becomes pliable because then it, I use my body weight just to push it. Make it into a ball and then flatten it, lots of icing sugar, little bit on top, not too much so I don't want it to crack. I'm going to set my guide sticks on the thinner side now yeah. and I roll away from myself and then roll towards myself. Quarter turn. To work towards myself, back in the middle, and away. Get loads more of that icing sugar. Put it away from you, over the rolling pin like that. Now put the board down, and now I'm just going to roll it away. Now, all I need to do is trim off the edges. Just trimming the edge, so, and then I just kind of make sure that there's no um, knife marks or edges. Shall I just give her a go? And yeah. if I get stuck? I'll, I'll message <laughs> Yeah, ring me if you need me. Okay, I should be alright. Yeah, you'll be alright. I'll Bye. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. I was absolutely knackered last night. <laughs> oh, welcome to my life. <laughs> well, what we'll do, we'll make our royal icing, which is quite easy. It's just, um, and it's basically oh, okay. a sugar mixture that sets really hard. So you just put all of your icing sugar a kilo in your kitchen egg bowl. Put three egg whites to start with. If you've got two, two lemon juice. Yeah, two lemons, yeah. Put all of that in. And then just get a, bowl, a glass of water to hand, because if we need a bit more liquid, we can also use that. Royal icing, you can do all sorts of things like covering cookies. You can write messages. It is quite a good ingredient to have if you're into cake making. Yeah, my mum always used to use it, I'm sure, for um, Christmas cakes. She used it. to do like little peaks Slurry. of the snow. Yeah. yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> so it sort of goes into dry clumps to start with. It's really dry, look. That's what mine looks like. Oh, yours is quite, is yours a bit of a paste already? Yeah, I would say. Oh, yours is probably quite done then. So just scrape it down. And what you want it to be is like very stiff peak. Like, so it's like, so it's kind of like this. We need it to be stiff for our clouds, you see. So that's what we're sort of looking for. But we do need to mix the machine for a, just until we can see that there's no lumps of sugar left in there. Oh yeah, that looks quite nice. So I just basically run my tea towel underneath the tap and then I squeeze out as much water as I can so, and then we'll, we'll place that over the top of our KitchenAid bowl while we're doing our colouring. I'm just going to get my tea towel and just um, lay the whole thing over that bowl so that's now protected and it won't skin over. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get all of our piping bags ready for doing our cloud decorating. He and me sent you all those lovely piping bags, didn't they? Yeah. So that's done, and I can just leave that to one side and make my other colours. 
and that will be plenty for our for clouds so what we're going to do now is we're going to make each of our colors so we're just going to use the paste colors you only need a tiny tiny bit i'm going to keep mine fairly pastel so i'm just going to use like the tip of a knife and just touch it in like that so i've just got a little bit stirring it slowly and this will do like two uh, two or three cookies easily so that's that you see it's kind of much softer than the white one so then that's going to keep completely sealed do you want me to watch you do your first color yeah just to check just to make sure the consistency how's our color do you think that looks good looks nice and looks nice and bright yeah that's perfect perfect brilliant that's lovely Next, make our other five colours and then we'll come back and all we'll need is our piping bags, cookies and scissors. All right, good luck. Yeah, thank you. See in a bit. So this is the fun bit. So I'm going to cut off, I'd say, a hole of about three to four millimetres. So if I just push it up, you'll be able to see how big the hole is. Get all of your piping bags cut like that. The thing to do is have a, a damp clean cloth. You just place the damp clean cloth over at the end of every bag. So I always start by piping the top first because then I push each one up against from the top down. That's the best way to work with royal icing. I twist it so I can feel that it's about to come out. So you just squeeze it. And I can get a much fatter line like that. So squeeze, and I'm squeezing it by eye about much fatter than it was when it dropped. And if it kind of, this is going to be a little bit of a rougher look, I can always kind of even kind of go back over it, see what I mean? Then you can just continue going up against the one you've just done. So then I, cut, I go against the red, keeping close to the cookie, and I just squeeze it from underneath to butt up against that line I've just piped. Leave a little bit of cookie showing at the top and the bottom. So that's really, really fun. And now I can just get my cloud and just do a nice puffy. So I think that looks really nice actually. I'm quite pleased with that. So that now, and you'll be surprised, this, this cookie now, it's quite heavy. Oh, okay. So, um, You'll probably want to do this on your baking tray. So you've trimmed each bag and you've cut away the extra flappy bit. Yeah. Great. Okay. I would be careful picking it up, but it's quite stable. But yeah, that's amazing. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, I am with those actually. They're really good. So you just carry on doing your clouds and then we're gonna decorate our cake and put the sprinkles on. What we're gonna do now is apply buttercream all over the side and the top. So I'm just gonna give this a slow mix again because that's fine. And I'm going to just load up frosting around my side as flat as I can and then I will um, smooth it off. So see how I've got holding it against the side. And I'm using a bit of a backwards and forwards motion because I'm, as I do it, I'm pushing it on fairly firmly. Not as firmly as when we crumb coated it, but I don't need to. I'm just keeping it an even thickness. See what I'm doing, just kind of like building it up. So what I'm gonna do now, clean palette knife, and I'm gonna now go around backwards and forwards just to get it smooth and pretty well finished, pretty straight. I'm taking off the excess where it was thicker in places. So this is now damp, it's just damp. Holding it against the cake. There, so now it's kind of um, looking neater. I don't want to scrape it too much more because we're going to get through to the crumb coating. I'm just going to do my top bit now. I've already got a fair bit of buttercream on here. So I'm just going to take a small bit and just do what we did yesterday and just do backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and just cover the top, just smoothing around, just to kind of coat it, adding it where I need it. Neatish because we're going to do the um, swirl on the top. You can just kind of like go like this and just like smooth it off. So now I'm going to get a clean small one, 
I'm just going to um, start on the outside. Yeah. And use a turn and just like do an indentation. Oh, okay. I'm just using my eye all the way around. And as I reach the second one, I just bring it in. So just continue it. You just keep on going round and round as you get to the middle. Exactly. You know? Oh, sugar. Just roughly like round and round until you get that swirl bit in the middle. Now I'm going to do my sprinkles. So I'm going to move you back round. Okay. Right, okay. So this is how you do it. Take a handful, come up quite close to it, and then I'll just press my hand in. Do you have to press quite firmly or not really? Quite firmly, yeah. So just like that. See, it goes wavy. I like it wavy. Okay. That, this looks okay. like it could be the easiest bit of what we've done so far. <laughs> you know what? It is. It is the easiest bit. So you've done all the hard work. I don't like to go that far. I just wanted to show you. It brings it to life. Yeah. And it's just fun. And it looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. It does look really good, doesn't it? I'm just going to watch you do yours. There we are. Fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. Hello again, Bethan. Hiya. So I'm just going to push that underneath the board. Lift it up. Crawl your hands under. I'm just going to move it across. Tip it and then just pop it down. Way too much room at the front here. So I can literally just get my hand and push it forwards at the back. It's nice and cold. So that's that. Do you want to get yours onto your board? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> that's it. Lovely. And over it goes. Perfect. Oh, that's not bad, actually. I think you probably pretty much got it there. But you can, like I say, you can shift it carefully with your hands if you need to nudge it forward or back. I'm going to get my letters. We'll need the edible glue as well. Do you want to go and grab your edible glue? So what I do, I put them on, and I want to see that it's spread out nicely coming across the front. So first of all, I just whack them on roughly. So that's my front, like line it up where I want it. Right, I want to stick them there. Move the tea away and just put a little bit of edible glue under where the tea bar was and then just put it back on top. A couple of blobs and just stick it on. You don't need a lot. Brilliant. Great. So the last bit is to put in our rainbow cloud and cookie topper. I've got two of these at the ready, which I'm going to be putting behind it. I'm now directing the cake facing me and I'm going to just confidently just lift it up and I'm just going to let it start to drop in like that so pushing it pushing it gently so you see how it's now almost touching the cake I'm just going to get my white icing put a little bit of icing on the bottom of that cloud like that and then continue pushing it in like that see if I want to tidy it up a bit so now I'm going to give it some extra support. I'm going to turn it round. See those cookie sticks in the back? Just for safety, especially if I was going to be transporting this in a car tomorrow. One, two. I just need to push it in a bit more against that cookie. Just kind of like... Secure them on, is yeah. it? Yeah. So I'm just kind of doing like a couple of lines against that stick. Because no one's going to see that from the front. Are you going to put your cookie on now and let it set and take it all finished tomorrow? Yeah, I think that yeah. would be easier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, in the middle. I don't want to push too hard, just in case. Look at it. How cool is that? After <laughs> the amount I put on there, that definitely shouldn't come off. No. And it's really good, Bethan. Oh. Wow. Are you pleased with it? Yeah. <laughs> I would never have thought I'd be able to do something like this. It's really good. Thank you. And thank you as well. Brilliant. Well, okay. Well, well done. Thank um, you. Thank you again. Like, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very See much. You later. Bye. Bye. Bye.